We're moving along um, nicely. We have had a lot more families join the original group of families from the Econo Lodge. Now everybody's in a different hotel, and we've had families from Cape Cod and Plainville. I think right now there are, might be something like 76 families. It's always a moving target. Even the state doesn't have an accurate assessment mm -hmm. of the number. So something like 76 families, 160-something people. I, I think, I don't know. I got a figure today, actually, because I was over there. And I wrote it down, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, let's see. You know, we're trying to get everything moving along. I think we have, we started the English as second language classes last week, which is my particular piece. And um, that was for some of the residents. Now I'm scrambling now that we have so many more residents to try and put together some other resources for them. Um, where we're really lacking are in mental health resources. It's just a huge thing. And I think over time, it's coming out that there are folks that have some real trauma and um, we need to somehow address that. Transportation is a huge, huge issue, trying to get people from A to B and the fact that they're pretty much stuck on an island. Um, you know, there are a lot of challenges, but all in all, um, like when I've gone there, there are kids playing with each other in the hallway and because it's now an indoor space instead of an outdoor space, people are able to congregate. And like sometimes I'll go and men will be playing um, cards or talking to each other in the very small dining room that they have. Women will be speaking with each other and congregating in the hallways. Um, so it's nice that people can at least have an indoor space to get together. The kids are being enrolled in school. Um, the, you know, people who were at Econo Lodge already are enrolled in school, but now um, I think Meg is wrapping that up this week. So anyways, we, we have a lot of challenges still. There's still a lot of need, um, but we're moving along. And, uh, you know, as I said before, you know, I always have loved living in Sharon and think it's such a wonderful community, but now I feel really proud to live in Sharon because there's been such um, a wonderful task force, including Louise, who was on earlier, who's done an unbelievable amount of work and Hannah Berman and, of course, Meg Dussault and many people. Um, so that's it. Thank you, Shelley, for all the uh, reporting, but also for all your work, getting literacy classes started there and for all the um, it's amazing work you're doing. For sure. Thank you. Can I just say one little thing? Um, the interface referral service that, you know, about that, Shelley, I had mentioned it earlier, but they are a mental health referral service that we pay for in the town. You could probably access that. So, so uh, Leandra um, McLean, who is the town nurse, also works with the task force, and mm -hmm. might remind. Um, I don't know if they have translation services for interface, but I bet you they do. Um, so maybe we should just like you know put a little note to like remind her to to let the residents know that. Um, they can go to this and there, there are services and referrals. Um, yeah. I have a quick question. You may or may not know this, but do they have mass health? That's tremendously helpful. Thank you. I'll cover it. And so there would be, um, some insurance benefits. Then. I mean, just to say the state needs to send people to the hotel to like do, I think, assessments and um, and really, you know, speak with people because for them to really reach out, um, I'm not sure that, mm -hmm. I don't know. The other program is Riverside County, Riverside. I haven't been on the last couple of calls. Do you know if we have our state assigned social worker yet? 
we don't. But today there was someone else on the call who's um, a mental health um, person. Uh, oh. I've actually uh, communicated back and forth with her. Okay, and good. I'm going to be speaking with her again tomorrow, um, I think. Um, so there was somebody on, but I, it's not somebody who's through the state. It's a Sharon resident who okay. is um, LICSW and has a... Oh, a, that's that, right. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I'd love to get looped back into that if, if possible and if it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So thank you for updating us. And yes, Kim, continue to like loop yourself in because I think that is a big need in that, in the, uh, in that realm. Uh, I just had a quick question about that, if I could interject. I'm sure. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know if there's anything that... Uh, Obviously, you outlined some of the more critical needs, but if there's anything the PD could do as far as being a collection point, we've helped before in the past. I know with more residents, there's more needs, but if there's a, a, something that is like a physical need, if there's you know, need for, I know there's a lot of kids there. I know there's a lot more kids there. Um, books, I know Tobin and I collected books before, um, but clothing, things that, you know, that we could do more passively because we're a 24-hour service. I, I, I don't mean to speak for the chief, but I'm sure he would be more than happy to uh, uh, provide the space if there's a, a need for that. So I don't know if I want to talk about off offline, uh, but I know with the increased people, there's going to be an increased need. If there's anything we can do with that, please let me know. Thank you, Chris, very much. Thank you. Well, that would be wonderful, too. Um, chief Madden is doing wonderful work as well um, on the uh, task force and talking about a car seat like placement and teaching people how to put car seats in and things like that. So maybe that's something that we can loop you in with too. Um, oh, also, Shelly, the um, Riverside will come to you. Um, we used to have them come to the school all the time. That would be amazing. If they when there was a crisis or trauma or something, they'd come. Okay, I'll suggest it. I mean, I. Yeah, I have my hands full with all the stuff that I'm doing. I have to say, like, you walk into the hotel and there are six people who have pressing needs and they will let you know what they are. And then I know I feel compelled to, to help with whatever it is in addition to the other things that I'm doing. But thank you for those suggestions. I will totally um, write to you offline and, and get a, just a tiny bit more information. I know Riverside but I don't know the interface and then try and, you know, make whoever is aware who's addressing the mental health needs that this is possible and please to do that. Thank you. Sure. I hear you. <laughs> Phenomenal. Thank you for doing all that you do. And I know that you, yeah, you've got such a big heart and it's such a, such a amazing movie also. There's a lot to do. Um, and it's really wonderful to see the, it's just beautiful to to see the the support that's that's being given and the um and the appreciation I think that's been shown back to by the residents. 